Well, uh, so, there we go. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think uh, on, on YouTube we find that the, uh, uh, the building the audience uh, is, uh, a lot of it is the content itself. And we, uh, we have a huge audience on YouTube, uh, about 180 million people per month. Is about uh, deliver about 1.7 billion video views per month, and uh, there's a couple of issues there. One is clearly the content, and the other are these networks, right? The channels, aggregation of channels, um, really helps uh, generate something that's actually kind of unique, which is big reach. I mean, we touch a lot of people, but also high level of engagement. In other words, they spend a lot of time and watch a lot of videos, and, uh, and that's that's really partially because of the network and partially because of the type of program. And we have a very fanatic audience. So you can imagine males 18 to 34, 13 to 34, we're video gamers. Uh, you know, they devour enormous amounts of content and they are very, very social, very active. They share, they comment, they like. So it's a very vibrant ecosystem there in terms of an audience. Well, we, we, uh, we've been, uh, we worked on Mortal Kombat, which was uh, actually a really interesting story in itself because uh, Mortal Kombat was um, a project that I think is kind of shows the way of thinking of the future of media in, in the sense that this young director named Kevin Tentra, he's a director in Hollywood, and he was doing kind of dance and choreography and more new things. He directed the movie Fame and he directed the, the Glee 3D project and did a lot of things with Madonna. Britney Spears and those kind of people. But he wanted to do action, right? So he uh, directed a short film based on the game Mortal Kombat, which was live action, and it was based on, a, on an origin story that he had. And he put it up on YouTube and it got huge numbers. Um, and then he got uh, really two, two phone calls from Warner Brothers. One which threatened to sue him because it was not his, <laughs> it was not his property. But another really from a creative executive that said to him, well, why don't you come in and explain to us why you did this? And, and he said, look, I did this because I want to show off that I can direct. But more importantly, uh, I think that if you make a, a 90 minute film in 10 episodes and you put it on Shima, it will drive huge numbers. And that's exactly what happened. It became a huge web hit. We're told it's the most successful web series of all time, 65 million views. Um, and now he's directing a movie for, for Warner Brothers, um, you know, multi, you know, $80 million budget, $100 million budget. Um, and this was interesting because it showed kind of the evolution of someone went from a short film to a web thing to a major uh, project uh, as a way of developing the audience. And really what influenced Warner Brothers is the fact that the web series did huge numbers around the world. And they could look at the numbers in England and France and Germany and the United States and Italy and every country, right? And it was a success. So it's the idea of incubating new IP, if you will, or re resurrecting all that. For our audience. Okay? I, remember, I used to go to one of the Machista movies, uh, but uh, you know, Machista contra Zod, all this kind of stuff that they used to do. And, and, um, uh, but that stuff could be resurrected in this new era, uh, you know, done in a different way. And also, like me, we had uh, a series which was a comedy that we developed. Uh, and the first season, we financed it, and they, they were so successful. Uh, I think it uh, generated about 10 million viewers, about 15, 20 million video views. And the second season, we did a deal with Lion King, uh, where they co-financed the second season, and it also played not only on our channel, on our network online, but also played on cable, on FearNet, uh, on their video on demand channel. So, uh, yeah. that was, so you can start seeing projects that have multiple lives, multiple windows. Uh, so it's very interesting. And I think as Alan said, this concept of going from short to series to some other type of, you know, uh, out, out, like television and movies is something that's really happening now. It's very exciting because YouTube is a global movie scope. Right? So yeah. the resurgence and the renaissance of the short, I think, is back. Yeah. Well, and this is the thing I think that's so different. You know, we talk about ourselves as being part of the third wave of video programming brands. The first wave, um, you know, in the United States were the broadcasters. And same in Italy, Rye and, and Friends TF1, mm -hmm. as you can see. Um, and the second wave were all the cable satellite companies. MTV and Discovery. And now there's a third wave of video brands that are being born on the internet. Uh, and there are a couple of things that are, uh, that, are really just, that are really different, right? One is that brands like Machinima are global from the outset. They're in every country, we're on every device, 
Whereas, you know, your local broadcaster rides huge in Italy, but doesn't mean anything in the United States. CBS is huge in the United States, doesn't mean anything in Italy. And TF1, you know, BBC, etc. cetera. Um, and so this global multi-platform, we show up where you are, as opposed to uh, the traditional television model. You go home and watch it on television when they tell you to watch it. Uh, is really a, a big change. So I think global plus all of these new video devices like smartphones and tablets and connected televisions has created a huge opportunity to scale an international entertainment brand. And that's really what we've been uh, focused on. That's a great point because to Alan's point, like you said, we have 180 million viewers in the, uh, each month right now growing, uh, 1.7 billion video views. And you know, for example, Europe represents almost 40% of that market. And Italy has been growing at a pretty fast rate for us. This last month in May actually, we had almost uh, 3.7 million viewers in Italy. That's like major television, yeah, exactly. you know, Prime numbers, Prime yes. And, mm -hmm. and it's grown from the beginning of the year from 1.5 to 3.7 organically. So next what we're doing in Italy is actually going to launch a channel for Machinima in Italian. So that's going to happen probably before the end of the summer. So we're very excited about that.